Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 331. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm sitting here today in the KIB studio with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, guys. So good to be here. We pray that today we'll be able to encourage you and, and uh, uplift the name of Jesus. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now, if you, if you guys noticed last week, uh, right after I had posted my last uh, video for the Biblical Life TV, by the time I you know I, I got it done, probably about 15 minutes before I, I, come, I came home, Mary, and by the time I got home, YouTube had already pulled it off. Well, it's about time. <laughs> I kept wondering, are we doing something wrong that they're pulling everybody else's stuff, not ours? And uh, they pulled it because of two minutes of the video where I was dealing with the threat matrix and dealing with uh, some health situations and just simply talking about my analysis from what I'm getting from doctors and scientists, okay? Not stuff that I've heard on the internet, but stuff I've actually, uh, either on video calls or, or phone calls, I, I've actually heard about. And man, they did, they popped that thing real quickly and I got a strike. And if most of you don't know, we actually have a channel on Rumble. Uh, and it's rumble.com, Biblical Life TV, that we're slowly moving everything through. It's kind of our backup station right now. Uh, but I'm also in the process of backing up all of our videos off of YouTube so that uh, if they do decide to say, poof, you be gone out of our kingdom, uh, it doesn't affect us because we have a backup. In fact, uh, well, we need to build up these other avenues anyway we because do. we need to, to have places that they don't aren't able to pull things. And we have actually had to fight a lot to keep Rumble with nothing about Rumble. Uh, you know, with uh, a lot of times with the, the ministry debit card, they, every time that uh, Rumble was charged, they came up with credit fraud alert, and you know they kept on they kept on calling saying, "Hey, you know this this is legitimate. It's you know the, the, a payable version of YouTube or like Vimeo," and uh, they said, "Well, this system will learn it." Uh, Twelve months every month in a row, it uh, it came up with a with a. In fact, the last time they didn't even send me a law. They didn't even send me an alert saying, "You know, is this you or not?" They just said, "We're not paying this." And I had to go kind of high up on the chain uh, to get that fixed. So that it's, it's showing that uh, they're doing things to hide truth. And anybody that has, uh, in fact, if you've ever researched, uh, there's an um, uh, alternative to Twitter called Gab. And it's actually run by a believer. And he has had bank after bank after bank shut down their, their business accounts for Gab. He finally went and found a Christian bank system talked to the president, and the president said, listen, we're Christians. We believe in what you're doing. This We need to have freedom of speech. Mary, within 60 days of him setting up his account, another huge huge bank system bought them up and for, so, for one sole reason. Within one hour of them signing the papers, they shut down his account. Oh, my goodness. And so, guys, we, we need to realize that uh, uh, that. This stuff is being active, and we just, we I think we need to be aware of it. Encourage everybody. Uh, we need to get off YouTube. We need to get off some of these things because every time you watch something, we have never monetized any of our stuff. They put ads on it, and they don't share a penny with us. They said, we don't care if you want to monetize it or not. We're going to make money off of you. So we're making them rich while they're censoring us. Well, I'm not so crazy about what they put up, but, you know, you can watch YouTube. I've had um, just – type in C.C. Winans or uh, different uh, Christian music, and they'll stop that and put some crazy ad in the middle of it. So, yeah. so you, we're better off, I guess, just getting our, you're, you're our in the playlist. Of, you're in the middle of an enjoying praise and worship, and they put an ED ad or something like that in there. It's so just, inappropriate. It's just easy to find the, the later songs of it. And there's, I know there's a whole bunch of stuff. Mary's got all, she has copious notes of all the yeah. stuff that's been, well, things they, are getting crazy. Well, they are. Um, but I, I tell you guys, I have an excitement in my spirit um, because I feel like I feel like things are just building and building. More is being exposed. More is being exposed, and we're going to hit, you know, a critical point here. And I believe God is going to move like He's never moved before. Um, you know, I think a lot of what's going on has to do with us. 
Oh, absolutely. I think he has to wake his people up. He has to shake us out of our, what what do you call it? Techno sorcery <laughs> slumber. <laughs> That's it. And boy, we've all been in that. Um, and it's almost like a coma. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. you can shake them and, and they'll, they'll kind of halfway, you know, it's like waking up a little kid who doesn't want to wake up. They'll just go right back to sleep if you don't well, knock and, them out of the bed. You know, for years, everybody said separation of church and state. Don't even be involved in politics or the government. You know, just, just pray and go on. Uh, we can see what happens when you do that. Yeah, and as, I mean horrid things. Not you know, it's not just life as usual, and you pay taxes, and you do. They they are legislating things that are taking human rights away. And we need to understand that even the concept of separation of church and state is not constitutional. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the figment of their imagination. But separation of state from the church is First Amendment. And guys, we need to be in, we need to be involved in every area yeah. of life. If not, you just hand it over to the devil. Well, and it's you know, we've got all the the different opinions of where we're at in Revelation, where we're at here and there. But is there ever been a time in the Word of God that He just has us sit back and let evil take over? Never. Never. You know, we're getting ready to come up to. Uh, Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, that whole thing uh, was the fight because they defiled the temple, and yeah. and you know we can we can take that in uh, modern terms as we need to get rid of paganism and cleanse our temples. Oh, absolutely! Antiochus Epiphanes came down and tried to Hellenize uh, emphasis on hell. Mm. Uh, the Jewish people, and I tell you what, when you look at what he did to the Jewish people, it made Hitler look like he was playing games. Uh, it was absolutely awful. They they literally cooked people alive because they refused to eat pork. Well, and you know, when the word where it says peace on earth, goodwill toward men was when Jesus was born. Yeah. We're not going into the time when Jesus was born. No. We're going into getting ready to go into, and it's early this year, uh, the Feast of Dedication, which we know Jesus attended. Right. And that, that whole thing of, of peace on earth was talking about that that was the beginning salvo of God reconciling mankind to himself. Mm-hmm. We're not talking millennial reign stuff. I'll be glad when eventually we get to the place where everyone beats their swords into plowshares. We're not there yet. No, no, this is still a great fight. The fight's because on. Because I believe the fight uh, for America is going to be key to helping Christians and other nations. You know, and um, they've got doing some things in Austria right now, Mike, to where you can only get basic goods if you're not, don't have the jab. Yeah. I mean, it, it is horrendous. And and the, the truth is, uh, you know, if, if the if it really worked, nobody would, there's there would be no breakthrough cases. But uh, one of the things I'm beginning to hear uh, from some of my connections is that there's actually more of them than there are those that have not been jabbed. And so we really, we really have got to, uh, uh, look at that. What what is the what is the truth behind this? It's it's right. more uh, than a virus. Well, and leads me to uh, yesterday when you were on uh, on your way to work. Boy, you talk about angels protecting sure. Mike. He's you want to tell what happened? <laughs> yeah, that I was uh, driving here, and there's a straightaway on C Highway, and it's we're we're in a agricultural area. Of course, you're always having to dodge odors, so your sensor alert is kind of on. And I was on a straightaway, and right before uh, I got to where there was like a, a road on on the uh, on the right side, a truck pulling a flatbed with a back hole. Literally, he did not look and pulled right out in front of me and crossed my lane uh, to go into a, a, a side road. And luckily, I was you know I wasn't looking down anything because I told Mary if I had been looking down for one second, there would have been no way I would not have hit him going fifty five miles an hour. And I literally turned the vehicle sideways in the road and looking back at how, you know, you're going 55 miles an hour, physics say that you should, it should take this much space to stop. And uh, I realized I stopped in half the space. Well, angels were helping you. And I'd I'd ask you, was it, you know, there's some places on that road to where like you can be down in a dip and somebody won't see you coming, but you said this was just straight. This was straight away. And leads me to... um, what I've heard several people talking about is that people that have had the jab are really having a lot of problems with mental clarity. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you could look at it a couple of ways. Um, a person just seriously not paying attention, somebody that 
has doors open and the enemy can use him to distract, distract him, him for a minute, yeah. so he did that or could it be he was a person that has taken the jab and is really having problems yeah. you know i a big I've red heard, car is kind of hard to miss it is i've um i've heard several people talking about like that there are more uh traffic accidents than ever before so i looked it up and the uh, Increase in accident fatalities. Now, these are according to uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and Forbes magazine, that in 2021, just the first quarter, there was an increase in accident fatalities of 10.5%. Then you get to the half point of 2021, it went up to 18%. Mm-hmm. That's a dramatic increase. So you have to wonder if there's not a lot more going on than anybody's talking about. Um, but we were very thankful and God's so faithful to protect us. I'm telling you, yeah. we could write a book just on the number of times God's angels have helped yeah. us. He didn't stop or anything. He just kept going. And I, I literally, Mary, I stopped a foot and a half from, from hitting them. And, uh, I was sitting there thinking God was good. And I'm thinking, you know, this continues. I'm going to need to wear a depend or something. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about next, there's uh, an eclipse coming on November 18th and 19th. And you know how the occult always do more on these because it's all, um, you know, astrological, everything's lined up. If you've ever seen any of the calculations and the diagrams they use to, to get everything just uh, just right to, to bring in all the occult power during this time, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, you just can't imagine how they, they do it unless it's just, you know, demonically inspired. Um, but this one is a partial lunar eclipse, but it will be the longest such event within a stretch of 1,000 years. So this will be something that they pay attention to. The mystery so, religions will look at that as a sign that darkness is going to come into ascension. And so we need to be praying because these are the times like when occult power gets built, and so we need to be asking God to forgive every every sin of any occult person that is working during this time to try to cause problems, to try to attack Christians with this occult power. So that'll that'll be starting November 18th. Um, I kind of got a long list of things I'm going through. I wanted to thank the veterans. I, I didn't even realize last last week it was going to be Veterans Day yet. And so I, I miss thanking you. You guys are so wonderful. Yeah. And the fact that you've been so courageous and risk your lives and put your lives on the line so that so that we can have a free country. Thank you so much. My heart goes out to you and and I don't believe that you have near the the benefits you need. As a matter of fact, I was reading uh, yesterday and I read that 160,000 military families are suffering with food insecurities. That's that horrible. is unacceptable. You know, we've got so much money in this nation that they waste on this project and waste on this. That's where we need to be putting the money. Oh, we need to be supporting our veterans. We need to be uh, making sure that, that those families are taken care of. And this is one of the reasons we got to get involved. We do. And uh, one of the interesting things I, I just ran across here, Mary, this last week, you know, speaking of vets, is remember when there was the big scandal when uh, as Trump was taking office that there was such a backlog on veterans receiving their medical through mm-hmm. VA that over 360,000 of them had died simply from neglect they could never get in. Well, Trump came through and he had fired all the people involved. And one of the things, and this was just kind of hidden in the news, one of the things that uh, the current administration did is they hired them all back. Because what we don't realize is that you know, we can vote people in and vote people out, but the ones that have the greatest influence are the is the bureaucracy that was never elected. They have unions and stuff, which almost makes it impossible to fire. And so you had them in the VA, you had them in the State Department, uh, you had them in in uh, law enforcement at the federal level, and it's it's like we're we're seeing, especially with Trump, what we saw is we had agencies that he was supposed to be the administrator of, constantly tell him no. That has never happened in U.S. history that I'm aware of. Well, they don't want us to have a strong military. That's been no. evident for years. Um, and, I, and, and I believe that they're pushing a war with China. Yes, they are, and, as well and as Russia. So if we don't do the spiritual warfare now, we could be faced with the physical war. We And you know what? 
we're weakened. As a society, we're weakened. And they've been working on this for a lot of years with the, the food, the way that it's, it's being produced and the lack of vitamins and minerals. Um, we're we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But um, we, well, right now, if there was a, a draft, Mike, they're going to be getting kids in there that are overweight that are are not active, they sit and and watch video games. We would be in such a mess. We we would, and when we look at even what they're doing with the military, they're trying to make them uh, fluid sexuality aware and all these crazy things. Instead of actually, when you're in the military, you're supposed to train for war. Okay, that's that's mm-hmm. just the long and the short of it. All these social experiments and and whatever way the uh, the military is supposed to be free of politics and free of all these crazy social experiments. But what it has done, it has weakened our military. It has drove a lot of them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, China, they're training all of their soldiers as if they were if, if they were all special forces. And mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're hyping up and everything. Every I mean, they're they're throwing everything. In fact, what what really alarmed me uh, this last week, uh, we were watching. They were talking about just the number. China now has a larger naval fleet than we do, that they have more submarines than when there's, there's certain things they're, they're bringing out that they have now surpassed uh, even what we call the, the trident of, of nuclear, where it's, you know, air uh, silos and, and, and submarines. They've, they had now have the same policy that they always have stealth fighters in the air with nuclear weapons, all the same things that we did during of the Cold War with Russia. They well, now, now they've got this wonderful stockpile of all kinds of equipment and weapons over there in the Middle East where we left them that they could go pick oh, up. Biggest blunder I have ever seen oh. in military history. So so we're coming to a crescendo, I believe, that where God is going to intervene. But I believe he wants us to rise up, take our authority, fight this fight. and. Um, oh, it's better for be, spiritual warfare now than a kinetic warfare. You, you got that right. Um, I was looking at... One of the statements by Candace Owens, I just love her. I do too. Um, and she said that uh, if you, her, I'm just paraphrasing what she said, but she said if you think things are evil now, she said it's always been that way. We're just now seeing it. And I thought that's what we've been saying for a long time. You know, it's coming out to where this isn't something new what's going on. They're just on steroids on it bringing it out. When, when I read that, I, I thought of there is a scene in Die Hard 1. You know, because he's up there fighting terrorists, Bruce Willis, and the cops are down there eating donuts and everything, and all of a sudden they started getting fired at, and Bruce Willis sticks his head out the the window of the skyscraper and says, Welcome to the party! (laughs) It's like, now you finally understand what's been going on. And I I think a lot of, we're we're kind of welcome to this party, we're beginning to realize the depth of what those that want to destroy this nation and to silent the church have done. Mm -hmm. And we're beginning to awaken to the evil that they have been perpetrating for for maybe over over a century in our yeah. nation. Well, another thing that happened is Britney Spears got back control of her life because her dad had total control for the last thirteen years. I personally, it's my opinion that that little gal is a program multiple, and that her dad's her handler. And so, this is a really good time for us to pray for her. Um, because the reason that her dad stepped in is because she was coming offline. Yeah, she shaved her head. She did a bunch. She was coming offline. She's a perfect example of a program multiple that's getting offline, and and the programming starts coming up, and and you you see. I mean, I, I watched a um, video with her in an interview one time. She switched right in the middle of it. Yeah, it was just as apparent as, as well, anything. A- and so I asked God to forgive her sins, sins that have been done to her. And to break, break that that power that's over her. You bet you she's another one of these program Disney kids. It's yes, just, and so Father, awful. save that little yes. gal's life, save her life, save her her children, bring her out of this, and let her be an example of your power to restore. Yes, Father God. In Jesus' name. Let her find Christ and find wholeness in the middle of all this craziness. Father, yes. we ask in Jesus' name. There was another odd thing that happened. I think I think it's connected to programming. There was a woman at the Bronx Zoo that crawled over the enclosure and declared her love for this lion, and she offered roses and money. Now, most people just say, well, this is a crazy woman. 
I think that it's Beauty and the Beast programming kicking in. Mm-hmm. I do too. Um, and so there's, you know, that gives us a clue. Programming's breaking down, and and therein lies a couple of problems. There, would, I knew there would be a time when the programming would just start falling apart, and that's good uh, when you consider what our dear friend Rust Isdar taught us about the chosen ones. Because I mean, they were they were being prepared to go in and just wipe out masses, um, and so it's breaking down. But at the same time, you'll have a whole lot of craziness going on, and so we just need to be. I I think we need to be extra um, alert when we're out in public. Kind of look around, see if you see anybody, you know, carrying a gun, or because once this stuff starts breaking down, it could be really be chaos. Yes. And so we need to be praying about that. Um, one of the main things that God was talking to me about this week is, um, you know, about his seasons. And I wanted to read uh, Ecclesiastes 3. It says, To everything there's a season and a time to every pers- purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up. That which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. And what God was was um, talking to me is about how because we have been taught the way we have in the body of Christ, we're, and we've talked about this before, we're out of sync with his season. Yes, we are. Because right now everybody's just moving into a lull of holiday activity. Holidays that come from another kingdom. Right. And so, so we can get, we'll get out of sync with what, because right now, see, the crescendo is building against against the craziness that's going on in Washington right now. There's there's things coming out. There's an opportunity for uh, good judges to raise up. And and what, what I pray over um, Washington all the time is ask forgiveness for the sins of the people in the White House, the Congress, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, leaders in the military. Ask God to break all occult power. Ask God to save their souls. Because when we pray like that and we're praying God's will that they will be saved, um, then it brings angels to fight warfare. At the same time, I pray, now, Father, if they can't be saved in your infinite wisdom, you know that, stop them. Yeah. You know, and and I don't think we can go wrong with that because what's getting ready to happen is a lot of these people that that are in there are satanic agents, and that's just the truth of it. So they're going to be drinking booze around their Christmas trees because they know it's going to build build power while everybody else has been deceived it's deception guys oh it it, it, it throws off and i think it throws off the prophets it throws us off prophetically uh you know there's a 99.9999 percent probability that jesus was conceived during hanukkah and they they go back to the time that zechariah was mm-hmm. uh, you know His, they figure it by the time in the temple the time in the temple uh and so that it was during this time this this is a time of of conception, and what's interesting is it's all it's called the feast of dedication. It's also called the F- the festival of lights. One of the interesting things at the point of conception, then that then that within that second, the 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 woman's womb will fill with light. It will the, the creation of life will completely light up her womb. I love that because the light of the world mm-hmm. has That's in a right. sense has come in. And so prophetically, well, everybody else, well, all the prophets that are in line with this other kingdom will begin saying this is, this is time to give birth to things. This mm-hmm. is actually time to conceive things spiritually. Yeah. I, I asked God years ago, I said, how, how do we know when Jesus was born? And I heard him speak just as clearly as anything. He, says, uh, he said, uh, look at John the Baptist. Look at you know his mother and and I I looked at all the scriptures about that and I thought well I still can't figure it out and and so then later on there were people that had looked at this and and timed out you know when um, John the Baptist dad was in the temple mm-hmm. and figured it out like that and and it made perfect sense to me um, because I don't want to 
I don't want to get an error. I don't want to to ever teach somebody or, or have somebody think something that's wrong. So that's why we go slow and, and we're trying to be accurate on these things because it matters. It, it, well, it matters, matters because what what would be Satan's number one ploy against us to get us to be disobedient? Oh, yeah. And he'd especially relish in the fact if we're disobedient and we think we're doing right. Yeah. You know, and some people will point out, well, you know, it doesn't it doesn't violate Scripture when God does something to add another another holiday or another feast if God does something significant. While that is true, what they forget is all the Scriptures that tell us don't learn the way of the pagan and try to and try to Christianize it or whatever and do it to me. I mean, and that's, that's exactly what the Catholic Church did. And they they they're in fact they're point blank. Yeah, they they're up front about tell it. Tell you in. In the encyclopedias. Yeah, we conquered Saturnalia. We mm-hmm. conquered these things, and we we created the Christ Mass. Mm-hmm. And so it was. And 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 they they would. And this practice is not only to holidays, Mary. It's like when you if you go to the Vatican, there is a statue that they say is Peter, that they have kissed so many times the big toe is actually almost gone. Okay. That's actually that's a lot of saliva. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> that's, if, if I'm remembering my my uh, mythology right, that was actually a statue of Jupiter that predates Christ by uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. They would take these statues uh, and they say, "Well, this is no longer Jupiter, or this is no longer uh, Samarimus. This is now Mary, and this is." Uh, they they would simply put a Christian veneer and said, "It's okay for you guys to continue to do these things. We're just going to change the names of them." Where when we look at the early church, and you had all these Gentiles coming in, the SOP, the standard operating procedure was they had to renounce all those things and leave them behind. That's the biblical standard. I think it's one that we need to return to if we're going to begin actually uh, walking in the things of God. In fact, we have uh, some dear partners that, that have a Christian school, and basically they said, here's, here's what we're going to do. If it's in the Bible, we're going to do it. If it's not in the Bible, we're not doing it, and that's and that's and it's when, kind of saved us a lot of grief. <laughs> yes, it has. You know, and it, it was it was really difficult for me, guys, looking at all this because um, I was so insecure back in those early days. Um, I was just thinking, you know, God's not going to show me something that the whole entire body of Christ is doing something opposite. Um, that's why I kept bugging my. <laughs> I said you got to you got to show me where I can understand it as clear as as anything can be to me. Uh, but there were things. The reason I think God was was sharing so much with me is because He saw ahead of time the attack that was going to ensue against us, and I mean it was no little attack, guys. No one. And so He was going to show us things to change where there there was safety, and so you know I think prayer can cover a lot of things. And as far as like Christmas, you know, I've, I've told people before, um, if they've got family that's insistent, they, they participate in things. Uh, you know, if you want to buy your kids, your grandkids a present, I just wrap it in plain paper and give it to them another day besides Christmas. You, there's nothing that says you can't give your kids gifts anytime. I just would make sure that it wasn't a Christmas present. Yeah. If you go to a, you know, if you if it's the only time you get to see your family is on the holidays, you can go, but just just renounce the paganism of it. Yeah. Renounce, pray, and say, Father, I do not participate in this. I am going as just to see the family. And I, I think that there's a mercy that, that can cover there. As far as your own home, I think the main thing that, that Satan uses to uh, cause fires in your home and all a whole list of things, sickness, is the tree and the wreath because those are particularly used as a, a male representation, a female representation. And so there are things that you can do to lessen it. We weren't in a position where we even had to struggle. We just got rid of it. because When, well, you're, when bullets are flying, basically, um, and there were spiritual bullets, but you're in a foxhole and trying not to get killed, yeah. and you're in the, in the den of war, uh, man, you start. It, it, there was no debate. Okay, this is biblical. This is truth. We're, we're, and uh, it didn't take us a long time to drop these things. It's like God showed us. And if and if it's going to cause the, the bullets to miss us, if you will, yeah. we got well, rid of I'm, it. And you know, and we I, the battle. I not only um, was concerned about our safety and wanted to make sure you and the kids were okay. 
I was so angry, I thought there's got to be a way that God's people can stand up and show that he's more powerful. And so whatever you need me to change, God, whatever we need to do. And, you know, one of the things early on, and the reason I mention this, because we're coming up to a time when people are going to be eating ham and, and, um, you know, on the, the holidays, if you're anything like my family used to be, it it just wasn't much about giving thanks to God or, or anything. It was about having the biggest bunch of good food you could come up with. <laughs> and then and everybody would afterwards. go. Uh, of course, we weren't in, interested in that at all, but your stepdad made it so miserable on those holidays. Maybe that's why it wasn't so hard to give up. But if all it was was, was I was constantly carrying him coffee, and we were sitting and watching football. And if, if him and your mom would, would fall asleep, the minute we'd go there try to turn it off, they'd wake up. And so your whole time is spent watching yeah. something you don't want to watch. I would and, rather sit there and bang my head against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I would make cheese balls, and I would make fudge, and the biggest bunch of desserts you've ever seen. And here we are in – now, just every year this happens. We go into flu season. There's lots of viruses going around, and when you eat a lot of sugar, it takes your immune system down. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, you talk about a setup. I need to go on the record. Cheese balls don't do that, okay? <laughs> no, no I, and there's there's healthy cheese balls you can make. I'm not saying that, but I mean, it was just... It was just it's all that great fudge you made, oh my word. Well, it was, it was all kinds of candy and, yeah. and stuff like that, and... Um, it's 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 a setup. I look at it now and I think, man, if Satan was going to try to set us up for failure physically and spiritually, he had a way to do it. And you know, um, I was back then also. You know, I've told the story before how God told me that you know how could He bless what He told us not to eat because I was getting ready to eat a bacon sandwich, and um, that was a vast majority of what we ate. Yeah, I don't think there was a. a Oh, I tell Very you many what. times we didn't have pork sometime during the day, either breakfast food. Oh, I mean, there was a, there was a time, and I'd, I've actually shared this from the pulpit back then, whoever invented the spiral ham should have got a Nobel Prize for that because it goes great with potato doodah. Uh, and and I, I wanted Mike to be able to just go through some quick things in a minute for if, if we've got new listeners and, and you've never heard it explained, like why um, – God didn't change his mind on what was clean and unclean on what to eat. Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to, re- you know, one of the most popular doctors right now is Dr. Axe. Um, and so he had some, uh, he's got an article, easy to to look up, problems with pork. Um, Dr. Ted Brewer is also another one. Um, they They just lay it out, you know, I think they believe spiritually like we do that it's not clean to eat. But I'll just take a couple of little sections um, in this article from Dr. X. He says, pigs are primary carriers of tapeworm, hepatitis C e virus, uh, porcine, reproductive and respiratory syndrome, a.k.a. blue ear pig disease, Nepal virus, men- menangle virus, viruses in the family, and I'll butcher this, paramyoxiviridae. <laughs> and so you go over here. And the, another section he's talking about uh, pork contains the larvae of the trichinella worm. This worm parasite is very commonly found in pork. When the worm, most often living in cysts in the stomach, opens through stomach acids, its larvae are released into the body of the pig. These new worms are making their homes in the muscle of the pig. Next stop, the unknowing human body that consumes this infected meat flesh. Um you know, it, he he says in one session how, you know, it starts with the problems with pigs starts with the digestive process. They don't get rid of excess toxins as well um, as they don't sweat, you know, that. And I guess that was a erroneous saying when I was a kid where they'd say sweating like a pig because yeah, they, it, they it don't appears sweat. they don't sweat. But, you know, there's all kinds of – now, you'll have people saying, oh, it's different than it used to be and pigs are prepared differently. And, but I'm telling you guys, I think it's a huge, huge problem when we eat pork and shellfish. Yeah. And God knew that. If you look look at, the, at what these – they are, they're the – the cleaners. The garbage disposals yeah. of the planet. They're the ones that, that clean up. Pigs will eat anything. Yeah. I, I saw even a little, um, a little, uh, I don't know if it's, I guess it would have been a sculpture back then in Egypt where they had the, like a, a symbol of an outhouse, you know, that they used back then, and it drained into the pig pen. 
And so I know these things are gross, but I just want I just want to have you start praying about that because we're in a critical point of time because I this is my belief. I'm praying every day it stops, but I believe that this is the just one thing that they're going to try to do. Oh. I think that there are much worse diseases that they have planned because they want to reduce the population. And so we need to be doing everything we can um you know, we, we can pray for restoration, which we've had to do. My goodness. There's no wonder our health was so bad, though. We ate every wrong thing you could eat. Our immune systems were in the trash can yeah, they were. because I was constantly baking cakes, and we ate sweets every day. And so, you know, our immune systems were so low that the first little thing came along, we would have to take antibiotics. So we were full of antibiotics. We were not only getting it from the meat we were eating and everything, we were getting it from actual prescriptions. Yeah. And so so we had bodies in bad, bad shape. And the good news I can tell you, nothing to do with us, simply by God telling us what to change and prayer, um, we're a lot better off than we used to be. Go a lot better off. And, and think what it would be for these little ones that don't ever eat pork, yeah. don't ever eat shellfish, uh, have you know a lot of fruit, have natural natural sweet. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of looking at that because you know every once in a while you want to fix a treat for your grandkids or something like that. Um, but processed sugar is is one of the worst things we can have. Oh, it is. And I, I remember going through a, a naturopathy school way back in the in the eighties. And, uh, you know, back then my response was, I can just pray over it, you know, in, in my arrogance. Uh, but the, one of the things they taught me is that, uh, you know, quit eating pork and shellfish. Now, these were, uh, and it was a more of a Baptistic school, but they really had done the research in, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in naturopathic things. And several things they said, and one of them really stuck out to me, says, you can fully cook pork. And you will kill 95% of the parasites in its eggs. And he said, think about that for a minute. 5% of the parasites are still alive and will be in your digestive system as well as their eggs. And he said that pork was never meant to be consumed by humans and that when we consume it, it burns so quickly in your digestive system that it consumes all the nutrients of that meal so that you come up with the, so you eat a meal with pork or you know whether it's ham or whatever in it that you get zero nutrition all you get is the fat and sugar you get zero nutrition out of that out of that food and you know uh, you know I didn't have a problem you know giving up the ham what was hard for me was pork bulgogi I remember that it's like oh I just drove a steak into my heart but I was willing to lay it on the on the on the altar say God I'm giving up these things. And it, I, I've got a little book out there called Eating God's Way that I actually exegete biblically all the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, about pork. And one of them is Peter's vision. Yeah, everybody and brings that up if you talk about not eating pork. Anytime, and the, well, there's, there's a hermeneutic rule that anytime that you lift a verse out of context or an event out of context, you end up with a pretext. A pretext is defined as something that appears to be true that is not. Okay, and there's five things that you need to understand to interpret scripture: context, history, culture, geography, and language. Okay, you you have to put it in there. Now, an, another axiom that you have in, in in scripture interpretation is scripture interpret scripture. So, level one, Peter has the vision. He goes down to Cornelius's home, and Mary. It does not say that he had a big ham sandwich when he got down there. It doesn't say that he that he had he went to Long John Silver's and had shrimp. Cornelius, these Gentiles, got saved, and so Peter came back, and then not only were they saved, but they were died dramatically filled with the Holy Spirit, just like on the day of Pentecost. I mean, it was a sign of wonder because this Jew had been trained, Peter had been trained culturally, so we're bringing in culture that a Gentile was just as filthy as a pig or anything else unclean. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he goes back to the council. So now this is Peter interpreting his vision of what happened. He said, God has shown me that the work of Messiah can make Gentiles clean. So 
either Peter completely missed it or his interpretation of the vision was that Gentiles could be made clean by the completed work of Messiah. That's right. why you and I are saved today. Number two, you have to understand the culture. When you read in the Gospels, there's a lot of times, especially it was the high holy days, that uh, the religious leaders would not go into a Gentile's home because they would be in, the, in their own doctrine, not necessarily toward, but their own doctrine, that they would be ceremonially unclean because they dared walk into a house or talk to a Gentile. That was the culture back then. That's one of the reasons to get Peter's attention. God gave him that vision because, okay, now you have all these years after after Jesus has was died, resurrected from the dead, ascended to heaven, and when God gives him this vision, he's still saying, I have never eaten that stuff. I'm never going to eat that stuff. He was just had to have something to show him to represent unclean. Yes. And because to him, their culture... There was no difference in a pig or a lobster or a shellfish and a Gentile. Now, what's interesting is when God sends him down to Cornelius' home, it says Cornelius feared God. There is a Jewish term, God fear, for mm-hmm. a Gentile, that, a, that this Gentile, this, this, this Roman soldier, this centurion, would he, he kept the feast, he kept the Sabbath, he kept kosher, he, he did not eat pork or shellfish, he did everything but to become physically circumcised to become physically Jewish. That's who God sent Peter to after the vision. And so he did not come down there and share him the good news that you can start eating pork again. He shared the good news of the gospel. To take Peter's vision And to say that God changed food is to violate every hermeneutical principle that exists in Scripture interpretation. And a lot of them will go to Colossians where it says that, but the Bible says that food is that the word that food is sanctified by the word and through thanksgiving. What does sanctified mean? Separate. Already. Yeah. So the approved food is so the word separates what is food and mm-hmm. what is not, and what lines up with the word you receive with thanksgiving. And to put the exclamation point all this when he because this is right before the verse in the last days they will forbid you to eat meat. That word is broma in the Greek. Strong defines the word broma to mean Levitically approved foods. And so Paul literally was saying, in the last days, they will forbid you to eat Levitically approved foods. But food is separated. What is food is sanctified or separated by the word, and you receive it with thanksgiving. There is, there is a continuity. Mary, If especially when you look at what happened in the intertestamental period, that you had this Gentile emperor coming down. He was actually one of the generals of Alexander the Great came down. And if you were circumcised, he would kill you. And if you had the audacity to circumcise your children, he would wipe out the entire family. If they refused to eat pork, because in the occult, pork is sacred meat. He came down and desecrated the temple by offering a hog on the altar Mm -hmm. of God, and it desecrated the temple. And my thing is, if it desecrated the temple back then, what does it do to the temple now? And we're the temples of the Holy Spirit. But he would, he would, they would literally cook alive anybody that refused. They would go person after person in the home, getting them to yield. And what spurred on the Maccabees' revolt? Okay, the the Maccabees' father was a rabbi. They bring a rabbi that had said it's okay to eat pork and everything else. And so he was completely Hellenized. He comes up and confronts Father Maccabee and says, we can eat pork, we can do these things, it's okay to be Hellenized. The Maccabees' dad pulled out a knife and killed him for violating the Torah. And then it was on. That's what that that was the spark of the Maccabean War to drive out and cut Antiochus Epiphanes. And it was over pork. So we can kind of put that to where we are today if we're in the season yeah, where Jesus went to the Feast of Dedication. Clean drive it, it out. Drive it out. Now, <laughs> now look at this culturally. So there's two things that the Jewish population would be really concerned about if Gentiles are coming in, circumcision 
and eating pork, Mm -hmm. okay? When we have the council in Acts chapter 15, the only thing that is brought up is circumcision. Why? Because at that time in church history, it was 99% God-fearing Gentiles that were being accepted into the faith because they all they lacked was circumcision. And the Apostle Paul says, you now have the circumcision of the Spirit. Your heart's been circumcised by Messiah. And so you're just as much a Jew as one walking around that's been circumcised in the flesh. Eating pork was not even on the table because the Gentiles were not doing it. And when they said, listen, things strangled and don't drink the blood is actually advanced kashrut, okay? It's one thing to say, okay, you don't eat pork and you don't eat shellfish, but advanced kashrut is how the animal is prepared, how the animal is put down. They they would, to, to put an animal down kosherly, you would, you would not strangle it. Strangling is a violent thing, mm-hmm. okay? That uh, and, and today, if you would go to a meat processing plant that was kosher, they pet on the cow, they give God thanks for the life of it, and they simply slit the main artery on, on, on the side of its neck, and it just bleeds out. It just simply falls to sleep. There's no violence yeah, to it. That makes sense. Because how you put down the animal is just as important as, okay, you're eating beef, you're eating mm-hmm. chicken, you're eating this. You show respect to the life of that animal. And so they were actually offering advanced cash root as well as we know the Roman culture is you can have sex with anything and that if you have a slave, they're all fair game. All, there, there were all these laws and stuff within the Roman culture that permitted all kinds of wild sex. And they're saying, you got to keep cut marriage covenant. If you will, you're already eating kosher, but how you put down the animal and keeping yourself sexually clean allows you to sit at a Jewish table and fellowship with them. Now, everybody has a starting point, and Moses is taught in the synagogue every Sabbath. You can learn from there is literally the ruling of the Council of Acts chapter 15. It was not the unhinging to the Old Testament. It was the solidification of the necessity to learn Mm. the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And why does God do this? It's part of the covenant. When God says, I'm going to remove disease from among you, number one, he did not. These things make us unhealthy. One of the things Brewer constantly insist on and and this is like like let's say if you had a great pork chop dinner and it was the best pork chop dinner within let's say 24 hours if you would go and they would test your blood for cancer you would show positive because it releases that much cancerous stuff into your body god number one god wants to loves us he wants us to be healthy and it's just that there's no difference mary in that and us telling our little kids that get mobile, you know, when they start crawling and stuff, and you have a dog or animal in the house, you don't eat out of the cat bowl. You don't eat out of the dog dog's food bowl. You don't eat out of the trash. Is exactly what, what God is doing here. The second thing that I demonstrate in this, and it goes back to the to Mad Manicadera, is there was a uh, there was a festival that required pigs, that pigs were the conduit of, of demonic presence that would be released into a group of people. And that demonic most likely, uh, because that was common practice, even though the Romans tried to uh, sequel it, uh, that somehow he got left from the other people when, when the pig, when the demons left the people and went back into the pigs and they were supposed to go back into hell. That's then. So when you actually look at what happened when Jesus cast the demons out of the pigs and they jump over the cliff, they were actually trying to fulfill the last half of that ritual, of that magic ritual. And so pork can be a conduit for demonic presence. That's why it is sacred in all the mystery religions and all the occult. Pork is sacred because it can become a reservoir of demonic energy and demonic force. And God is saying, not only do I not want you to be unhealthy with these things, but because of their uncleanness, that opens the door for these animals to be a conduit for spiritually unclean things. And I don't want you to participate in that. 
And all that is actually laid out in the Word of God. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of historical and cultural studying on it because the Word of God was not written in Chicago. It was not written in the foothills of Tennessee. It was written in a culture that, uh, that existed 2,000 years ago in the Middle East, in Judah. And to understand, to hear with their ears and to see with their eyes, we've got to do a little research so that we can properly interpret Scripture. Mm. And, and the good news is that God wants us to be healthy. And so to me, and I, I kind of joke about giving up the pork bulgogi, and I mean I put a ton of pork bulgogi away in my day when I was younger. Tweaking these things in my diet and giving it up is nothing compared to what God's done for me. Mm-hmm. And so it's a minor thing. It's just we just, when it comes to our stomach, we don't want God to rule anything. Well, I think it's with more than our stomach. I think it's just with what we want to do. Yeah. You know, what entertains us. What and um, That's why we, we have this jaundice for the commandments of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so it's it's if we're if we're going to return to publicity, this this is a part of it. And uh, God doesn't do it because He doesn't want you to have the pleasures of having a nice BLT. It's because He says I don't want you to be sick and I don't want this yeah. to affect you spiritually. And uh, is there anything else you want me to cover, Mary? Before I go on with no, with my I'm stuff? I'm just enjoying this. Let's go. The the meme of the week, and I, I ran across this the other day because we, we are we are truly living 1984. In what we're seeing in America. And the meme said, there was no such thing as fact checkers until the truth started getting out. And if that wasn't the truth, mm, I don't know what true. is. <laughs> and uh, especially when you start finding out who the fact checkers are, and they're always liberal, and sometimes they're connected to uh, three-letter agencies. Uh, Hosea 6, 4, and 6 says this, and this, this is probably one of the most quoted but never finished verse of the Bible, Mary. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Everybody stops right there. But it goes on and says, because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you from being a priest for me. All right. Do you know how you're going to get sidelined? We always talk about the kingdom priesthood. You will be sidelined as a priest if you begin rejecting God's truth, Mm -hmm. the knowledge from God. But he goes on to say, because you have forgotten the law of your God, I I also will forget your children. And there's, there's this dynamic that when we begin rejecting things that our flesh doesn't like, that's in the Word, we open ourselves up to greater uh, deception, as well as God beginning to pull back from us. And do you think that would be like one way maybe just everything just dies down in a ministry, or do you think it would be like get on steroids and on crazy steroids, deal? <laughs> on steroids with other things. And one of the things, you know, and I, I've been a part of the – uh, the charismatic movement since the 1970s, okay? Uh, I got filled with the Holy Spirit in 1975, 76, somewhere along there. And I have seen it from being very, very biblical to now filled with New Age. Because somewhere along the line, as they begin introducing things that might have re- might have produced carnal results, you can get excited and not be the Holy Spirit. You can get excited mm-hmm. yeah. and have big offerings and not be the Holy Spirit. Uh, they begin opening the door to them doing more and more New Age things as well as, I mean, back in the 80s, there were there were people that, uh, that warned about how the New Age had targeted the charismatic movement because we were doing major damage, and so they had to uh, neutralize our power. And, uh, guys, we, we have seen that, and, and so there's this progression of the rejection of truth. And there's a danger to that. Uh, we also find in Matthew 13, it says, Therefore I, I will speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, saying, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of the people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And surely I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, 
and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And Jesus is saying, listen, can you imagine? Well, I I think one of the things that just blows me away is here you have the word of God made flesh dwelling among us, and he was speaking absolute truth. But people had already set in their hearts not to hear. They had begun already replacing Jesus warned them, your traditions are making null and void the word of God. They had said in their hearts not to hear and not to see. They want they wanted their own truth. And Jesus says, because of that, it's stopping you from hearing the truth that you can't see and you can't hear. And 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 uh, in Second Thessalonians two eleven and twelve, and you know we we talk, and I, I've talked about the. Uh, when Paul shares about predestination, it is always preceded by foreknowledge. It's foreknowledge first and then predestination. And we see this really brilliantly in, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. And it said, For this reason will God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they should be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And so the people already had set their hearts to reject truth because they gained all their pleasure in the unrighteous deeds that they were doing. And God said, that's where you set your heart to. So you built the fire. I'm just going to throw gasoline on it because I have already seen in my foreknowledge, there's nothing that I can do that'll change your heart. And when you really understand the dynamic of what happened with Pharaoh, Pharaoh had already determined that in his heart. And so God says, I'm just going to go ahead and that's, that's, that's the, what, that is what you have decided. And I understand there's no way of changing it. So I'm going to have you double down so that I can judge all these other gods of Egypt. That's in context of the, of the predestination. Guys, men set their hearts to reject truth because they draw, they draw pleasure and unrighteousness. And because they have set their hearts to this task, God's pouring gasoline. Guys, we are literally seeing... 1984 unfold before eyes, and it did not begin in the 21st century. And I, I think just as far as modern times, uh, and I, in fact, I document this in the Shiner Directive, uh, that in 1917, J.P. Morgan uh, set up a think tank on how are we going to control all news in America. And they said, listen, you don't have to buy all the newspapers, just there's like 12 or 15 of them of the major ones that became like the AP and others, what we'll do is we will buy them, and then we will begin instructing. If you want to be have a job as the editor of these newspapers, you're going to obfuscate truth. You're going to go by the things that we tell you. So in 1917, the what we call the fourth estate, the, the news agencies, quit being the vanguard of our nation and were bought by J.P. Morgan, which was an Illuminist. So it's takeover by corporation. Takeover by corporation. Round two, and there's probably more rounds than this, but round two, uh, shortly after World War II, the term politically correct was introduced to control the speech of individuals in America. And a good friend of mine, Dr. John Gar, sent me this one thing, and it was a communique between Harry Truman, uh, President Truman, and uh, General John MacArthur. Okay, now John MacArthur was the one who... Uh, officially oversaw the, the the winning of the war against the Japanese. In fact, he knew enough of their culture that he required the admiral to give him his sword, which act, which is absolutely un, which represents in their culture absolute unconditional surrender. Mm. And so he's writing back to to uh, to Truman and says, you know, we're we're we we got these Jap blankety blanks exactly where we want them and all that. And Truman says, uh, that's not politically correct. And uh, MacArthur says, I'm scratching my head. What the heck is politically correct? I, I don't know what that means. And Truman writes back and he says, well, he said, as, as far as me and, and uh, I, f- I forgot the name of his assistant, as far as we can tell, it's the liberals believe it's their ability to pick up a turd from the clean end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, oh. And, uh, but it, it, was, it was a way of controlling. That's an actual, actual That's what an he actual said? quote. Oh, my word. Because Truman says, you know, I don't understand what they're doing, and it's like it's, it's stupid. But it was a way of controlling speech. How many times has, has the church been silent because it's, that's not politically correct to say. That's not politically correct to say. You can't say that. That's right. Kids don't say that. <laughs> no, don't say that, guys. Um, 
the third round that we begin to see introduced was something called hate speech. Now, for the common sense Joe, that would be like to say, I hate white people, I hate black people, I hate Chinese, or I hate whatever, okay? That is, but the concept hate is very subjective. It's not defined, okay? And because of that, uh, what happens if you hate truth? And that's exactly what it's taken on. And guys, in our day, it's gotten so ridiculous. Uh, there, in the last four or five years, it, it's like um, grades in school are racist. Uh, we just came out, Buttigieg just said recently that American roads are racist, that roads and highways are racist. Um, and what I, I, I guess what, from my point of view, and, and I know there has been horrific things done uh, against our African-American community that needs to be addressed, but not by responding with greater hate. That's one of the things Martin Luther King was very specific on. You have to respond out of love. And he's the gold standard as far as I'm concerned. And I think he was able to be the gold standard because he was a believer and a minister of God that understood and had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. But it's gotten to the place of ridiculous. In fact, I just saw a cartoon the other day that uh, had a Democrat with a club and there's just this big pile of goo. And he said, what was that? And said, it used to be a dead horse, but they've done beat the dead horse to the place where it's just a bunch of goo talking about using racism or that this hate speech is an excuse to control everybody. And they have done that. And the Bible tells us everything that we do, everything that we're to speak, we're to do it in love. And uh, I like what uh, Coach Dave says. He says, sometimes truth sounds like hate to those caught in darkness. That's true. That's the truth. And, you know, the round four in, in this salvo against us with the introduction of the Internet and podcasting, literally that began to, we finally found an avenue to go around the gatekeepers of the elite. The evening news, and back, back in the day, I remember back as a kid, there was, what, four, three stations, NBC, CBS, and ABC that had if news programs. Lucky, if you were I, lucky. I was out in the boonies, we had two. <laughs> yeah, and so they, they, it was easy for them to control the news, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but with this new technology and podcasting and everything, all of a sudden, uh, there were all there were alternative sources. There were podcasts. I mean, now you can video stream and everything else. And so the elite began to raise up a technocratic royalty to control the information. It's called censorship, even though it's a violation of the First Amendment. Uh, we we saw that with YouTube. They're doing it all over the place, Mary. And in fact, in there are now ministries. If you would if you would go to Google and to search for them, they have been removed from the search engines. Mm. You see, there's going to be guys. There's going to become a time that uh, the only way to find biblical life TV is you're going to have to share it with someone the direct URL. And there's even a chance since now they have made ICANN, which handles all the addresses international instead of owned by America, even though we invented it. The international community could come and say you don't deserve an IP address because we don't like what you're sharing. And so we're, we're going to have to uh, understand that this is going on. And, and I've already shared how that uh, uh, the censors have begun rising up as well as corporate banks begin to shutting down companies that they didn't agree with or even individuals. That there have been just a lot of individual Christians that are involved in news that their banks just simply close their accounts and keep their money. Number one, that stuff. We, we saw that with uh, Jim Baker over a lie that there was a liberal group that edited a broadcast that he did. And I've actually sat down with Carl Gallops and talked about because he was there that day. And that is then that was not what was said. But because of that, Mary, it cost his ministry millions of dollars in legal fees and shutting down, you know, with a with a with a national ministry, if you can't process credit card, yeah. That's that's usually a death sentence. And here he has all the people working for him that he needs to pay their salaries and stuff. So they uh, they they can they they can hit you hard and so we need to have ways of bypassing all this. Uh, round uh, five, um, um, uh, there was a report and I've got the uh, the report right here, and this was out of a uh, we we're beginning to see uh, parents going to school boards concerned about critical race theory because in critical race theory is 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 bound up with Marxism in America they could not do class warfare like you could in England. If you ever watched Downton Abbey, 
you know, you have the lords that are that are rich, and you have those servants working downstairs. And so, socialism worked really good in, in saying, okay, we need to repair this class thing. And there was a war between classes in America. They knew that wouldn't work because anybody, regardless of your skin color, if you get the right education and you work hard, you can better yourself. It used to be. And I think they've tried hard to even suppress that in many ways. And so they used race. And this this is a report out of Fort Worth that says a critical race theory activist went on a violent rant at a Fort Worth uh, school board meeting claiming that he had th- he had 1,000 soldiers locked and loaded, which is a military term, meaning that they were armed, threatening everybody in the audience before a- a- officers escorted him out of the room. Now, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. If you remember uh, during the... Uh, the uh, the 2020 uh, or the uh, yeah the 2020 election in, in Pennsylvania uh, that you, you there's a whole process to certify and that you have certifiers that are supposed to be both Democrat and Republican that go and certify uh, they were receiving threats we we saw that in 2016 that the national electors were receiving threats they're going to be calling their home and threatening their families and so you had this one woman that was a Pennsylvania legislator that basically on one of her fa- YouTube or whatever it was, uh, she called for her soldiers to rise. Now, later on, she tried to recant that and say, I was talking Christian soldiers, but nobody bought that. They knew exactly that was that was a Marxist term. In fact, she was censored by the PA legislatures for what she had done. But that uh, we were having Marxists, if, if they can't, if they can't, if they, they can't censor us, if they can't shut us up, then they're, they're going to go and say, we have soldiers that are going to take care of you. And you say, oh, man, this is horrible. This is horrible. Listen, the church has already overcome stuff like this. It overcame it in Russia. It overcame it in Rome. We just need to know what's going on, and we need to have alternate ways of getting information out, of funding ministries that are telling the truth. We need to be aware that this censorship is going on. And once you, and once you begin pleading the blood of Jesus, like over the media, I share on this in the Shiner Directive, over over your news broadcast, and I, I've heard from so many, they said I start doing that. Next thing you know, I'm yelling at their news broadcast because for the first time, I'm picking up their lies. I'm picking up where they don't want us, and sometimes they don't they don't even cover a story. They put some fluff piece up. Or Mary and I have even wondered sometimes when you have, let's say, somebody famous dies, it's always in strategic places to, to push through the news cycle to where it becomes this instead of the real story. Like the you know horrible things that happen in Afghanistan or whatever, guys. We got to be aware of this. We need to be aware that the enemy is trying to obfuscate truth. He's trying. He's he's instead of us putting our light under a bushel, he's trying to create this iron dome that he can put it under. When we realize that, we can begin seeking the face of God to find a way around it. And I think that's part of the feast of dedication, is that when we understand this. It, it, it is time to have a vigil. Now, a vigil was a time uh, in the, middle, in the, in the, the uh, middle Ages when a warrior was getting ready to go to war. He would spend the night in prayer before God to make sure there was nothing in him that would prevent him from uh, moving in the power of God during the battle. And I think that's what the, the Feast of Dedication is. It's time. The Feast of Dedication is a time of cleansing the temple and rededicating it to God mm-hmm. to overcome what Antiochus Epiphanes had done in his desecration. And there has been a lot of desecration of the temple of God in our day, mm-hmm. in our theologies, uh, in, in our eating, and in so many different things. If we're going to return back to publicity, there is an anointing of God on this season in, in the rhythm of, of, the, of the feasts of God. Jesus participated. In fact, it was during the Feast of Dedication when they, when they had so many menorahs lit up in Jerusalem that it would light up the city, and you could see it for miles. It was during this feast that he declared, I am the light of the world. Mm-hmm. You want that? I'll be Jesus never missed an opportunity to bring it back to him fulfilling the promise of Scripture. There is an anointing in this season if we'll hit our knees. And it's not to say that we can't have great time with family and do a lot of things, but there is an anointing from heaven right now that will prophetically release a fresh vision, 
uh, God will take the scale away from our eyes. He will take the, the crud out of our ears so that we can hear heaven and we can rededicate the temple, that we can, we can bring it back to biblical standards. Mm-hmm. Oh, how that is necessary. Yeah, it really and is. And let me tell you something. It scares the hell out of the devil when God's people begin returning back to the word of God. Oh, and start cleansing themselves. Mm-hmm. The Apostle Paul said, listen, in a house, in a great house, there were many vessels, some to honor, some to dishonor, and some like to stop right there. He says, but if a man will cleanse himself, if a man will cleanse himself, if a man will cleanse himself, he will become a vessel of honor, meat for the master's use. That's right. And let me tell you something right now, saints of God, that you can't even begin to fathom what Jesus wants to do through you. Well, that's right. And the only thing he requires is if a man will cleanse himself, Mm -hmm. begin disciplining himself to the teachings of Jesus, and the teachings of Jesus do not begin in Matthew. He's the one that taught Abraham. He's the one that taught Moses. It's Jesus from Genesis 1 on to the end of the book of Revelation. He is the noble aspect of God. He's the one who gave the commandments to Moses. He's the one who parted the Red Sea. He's the one who brought Pharaoh down. He's the one who walked with Abraham. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And as we return to that, and there's this cleansing. With the cleansing, what you're doing, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell where the unclean is. And so part of, of doing like when the, when, the, when the children crossed the, the River Jordan and they had to drive out the ites, they were making room for the kingdom. As I drive out the ites in my life, and I push the unclean things out, and I repent of it, and I begin establishing the kingdom, I'm making more room for God, for him to fill, for him to use, for him to anoint. That's where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. That, that is the, the season. exciting time. That is the biblical season for we are. We are, in a, we are in a season to hear truth so that truth can be established. We are in a season to hear what God is saying prophetically so it can give us eyes to see the future and prepare for it. That's right. Right now, if we'll step back away from everything the world is doing and do what the kingdom is doing, God's calling us to do. Father, give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear. Let us fight the obfuscation of truth. And let us all be about your truth, walking in your kingdom, walking in your love. In Jesus' name. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with heaven's power to withstand The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com.